Hey everyone, Nubkex here, and welcome back to some more Heroes of the Storm gameplay. In today's episode, we are on Warhead Junction, and uh, yeah, as you might hear in my voice, by the way, I'm still sick, all stuffed up, a bit sniffly, so apologies if that decades or detracts from the audio quality in any way, or the commentary. Um, but yeah, this was played with uh, my friends Skyforger and Clickshin, who have been in some of the banter with the bros, uh, maybe badly named series. <laughs> um, but yeah, they've been in some of those. So if you want to check out some of those episodes where we're actually talking to each other and stuff like that, and Roger was in there for us, uh, with us for some of those games as well, you can check those out. They're a lot of fun. I think you'll really enjoy them. Um, this will be just a normal gameplay video with me commentating and being analytical and stuff like that. You can see at the start, we were considering uh, sort of a troll comp for this game, basically just going all specialists and seeing what we could make happen. Uh, it doesn't end up being that. This does end up being uh, a very uh, try-hard type draft. <clears throat> Anyway, the bands have come out. I actually don't think they're very good bands, to be honest with you. The Falstaff makes sense. I don't like the Zarya band. She's fine. She's a good hero, but she's not really band worthy on this map, in my opinion. Uh, you have things like the Lost Vikings and stuff like that, which are much more powerful. They actually go for a Medivh first pick, which is also a little bit unusual. Um, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Someone is questioning why why Abathur. I think that's kind of a curious thing because I think Abathur is actually pretty decent on this map. You know, getting those mines down, having that global presence on what is one of the biggest maps in the game and the split push power can be pretty good. We lead with the Vala then as our first pick with the Zagara. Two very strong picks on this map, two like top tier damage dealers, especially the Vala right now. The enemy team counters with a Malfurion and a Zeratul. So I do actually like the Malf and Medivh. Uh, combo, Medivh providing some protection from burst damage if we do opt into that, and the Malfurion providing a lot of sustained healing. And then the Zeratul, uh, I think Zeratul is great on this map, his ganks can be very impactful, very scary, stealth being very useful here, and he's also very good against Vala, because Vala is such a squishy hero, the blow up potential that he brings against her, very very strong. Um, <clears throat> we band out the ETC. And the enemy team then responds with the Brightwing. I mean, ideally, you don't want to be banning the ETC as the first ban on this phase, because normally the, the second ban team likes to do that. But it's fine to remove it. They remove Brightwing. They want to get rid of that uh, global presence hero uh, that can also reveal stealth, therefore sort of countering Zeratul uh, in many ways, you know, making it difficult for him to gank anyone and revealing a lot of stuff. Um, so yeah, and also, you know, it does remove some, another one that tier 1 supports. Then we do grab Oriel though instead, who is still a tier 1 support, and combo her with the Vala. Gonna provide her with a lot of energy, thanks to that Bestow Hope, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be pretty effective. I am hovering Illidan, I was thinking this would be a very good Illidan game, though we'll have to see what the other team does pick up. They do pick up the Chen. <laughs> I was also looking at Gazlo as another potential thing. Uh, so Benji is saying Ilden's not very good against Medivh. I actually think he's probably, he probably is. Um, I don't know why he's saying he's not good against Medivh. I don't know, I have not played the, the combo much, but considering it myself, I'm like, hmm, well, is he not that good against Medivh? I mean, Medivh can block burst damage, but Illidan doesn't have that. Uh, Illidan can still chase people through the portals and stuff, it's not a big deal. Hard for Medivh to hit him with his Q as well, so I don't know. I think it would be pretty reasonable. You seem considering a lot of very different options for what heroes to take. Something that might be fun, might bring some good gameplay. I decided to go for the Thrall in the end. <laughs> we were having some banter in the chat, uh, in the voice chat we were using for this. But yeah, basically I was like, I want the Master Skin, so I'm going to pick basically what would be the sort of standard enough meta pick in this sort of situation. So basically, how, why am I picking Thrall? Where does he fit in? Well, <clears throat> if you look at our team and the enemy team, on our team we already have two very strong ranged damage dealers with Zagara and Vala. We've got strong solo support, we've got strong solo tank. Another frontline hero would fit in very well. Um, on the enemy side, they have, you know... Lunara, they've got a, a fairly squishy team actually, fairly vulnerable team, so I figured Thrall would work very well here. Uh, the Chain Lightning should get a fair bit of value, fair bit of poke, good solo lane as well. Uh, I'll be good at turning around uh, engagements by the Zera tool. Uh, the Sundering is something that a lot of them, pretty much all of their heroes, have to be aware. You get some nice picks for sure. Uh, and the burst damage I bring should actually synergize pretty well and be difficult for the enemy team to play around. So. 
picked up the Thrall for a couple of those sort of considerations. Uh, and also, most importantly, I do want to get the Master Skin for him. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully you can pick that up. Unfortunately that, uh... Oh, it's actually a tower. Okay, that's funny. I was gonna say, unfortunately that, um, that thing, the uh, Zelnaga artifact thing, this was filmed just before the Samoro patch. No large differences, just Samoro. Uh, I thought it spawned in one of the fountains, and I was like, yeah, not worth clicking that. It's actually a tower though, so it would have been fine. Anyway, Thrall, yeah, it's actually a bit of an, that quest is a bit of an advantage for Thrall, because you go into the game and having your passive partially stacked already, that's a bit OP. <laughs> but uh, regardless, here we are. We're going to talk about Thrall and how he plays. I think I have a viewer replay either out now or around the same time as this, where someone is playing Thrall. So this should actually combo pretty well. And he has remained just a super consistent, great hero all around to pick up at all times. So I think it's, it's about time we probably did another Thrall video for sure. Um, I think our last one was a bit of a disaster. We just got absolutely raffle stomped, so it wasn't really good insight into how to play him at all. I mean, one of our teammates was saying, don't fight, he's gone off to his solo lane. Uh, Zagara wants to solo, so <laughs> so we just be friends. But anyway, you see a pretty good start to this fight, actually. Oh, unfortunately, the Medivh lives with, like, no hit points remaining. Very unlucky on that. But you can see, basically, my thought process in there. I landed my root on him, my Feral Spirits, my W, as I figured he was about to run away. Basically, he was in there with the Force of Will. I figured, okay, he is probably going to try to teleport out or portal out of there when that force of will is about to expire so i'll root him when that comes up so he can't actually get away and we got a lot of damage down to him and sadly the chain lightning was just not quite enough to pick up the kill bit of bad luck but oh well still good to get him low our vala is uh, a bit of a negative ninny unfortunately you might say but what can you do? We're getting a nice sort of trade down on the Chen as well. Just sort of making the most of my abilities. And here, this is actually quite an important thing with Thrall. Level 1 talent I did pick up was Rolling Thunder. You can see it improves the range of my Chain Lightning, which is useful. And as you'll notice, the way I'm basically attacking these minions, whenever that the Chain Lightning hits someone, it applies this little sort of like pulsing blue electric thingy on them. If I hit them with that active, you can also see my League of Legends, the last hitting skills right there. I've been watching some of the World uh, Championship for that. In fact, all of the World Championship for that. So just last hitting like a boss. Um, but yeah, if I hit minions that have that on them, it gives me back 10 mana. So it's quite important while I'm laning and stuff like that to try to focus that in. And um, yeah, just make sure to be hitting and triggering each one of those lightning procs as much as possible to maintain my mana. It's the thing about Thrall is that your trait gives you a ton of self-healing. It's really your mana that is your limiting factor because you don't have any mana self-healing. At least not without talents. And none of the talents we're going to be taking. Level 4 I picked up uh, Ride the Lightning, which is going to let my Chain Lightning bounce to two additional targets. It's going to give me more stacks of my trait, which means more healing, uh, a bit more damage in team fights, and, you know, more, more wave clear. And... Uh, yeah, it's just going to be fairly useful overall. You can see the enemy team was near us, but I noticed when they moved away in the minimap, that's when they moved in and threw down that nuke, just firing it off. And you can see my trade keeping me alive, not really too worried about any of that sort of damage. Just going to back off now that Malfurion comes back, make sure not to get caught out by any rotations. It's fine. But yeah, you can see I was kind of lurking for a while there, being very careful not to go too far forwards and get picked out. Once they saw the Lunara was gone, uh, it was safe to just move in and fire that off. Knew the Chen couldn't actually uh, kill me and that the damage wouldn't stick anyway. Um, then I do a pretty big map rotation here. I was trying to work out where to go and what to do, but basically it was Chen and Malf up in the top lane. I knew we weren't really going to get much of a push done. No real kill pressure from us. So I decided, you know what, I'm just going to come down here, take out this siege camp, get a bit of pressure on the bottom side of the map then to help out my teammates. If they've got two heroes up top, they're going to have a hard time actually countering that down bottom. You see my teammates have a similar idea. They actually push in pretty aggressively here. I'm going to rotate towards the middle, trying to find that enemy team, because I figured they're rotating back towards my teammate too, my teammates too, because my teammates are pretty deep down. And we do actually find them pretty far out of position. Nice damage down on this air tool for myself and the team. Uh, we pick up a double kill right there. So yeah, you can see I was positioning very aggressively and into the fog of war and everything like that. I knew I should be pretty safe and that I might be able to... Uh, catch the enemy team out in the rotation and that did actually work out also there trying to bait in the Lunara hitting her with the Q when we can unfortunately the W misses because of the Oriel knockback effect which is unfortunate and the Medivh shield does protect the Lunara for most of that damage so our attempted uh, fort dive didn't quite work out the best for us to hit Lunara with another chain lightning which he is able to survive Malfurion has arrived now Zeratul's here as well 
And poor El Crickshin on that Muradin is not going to live much longer. Getting what damage down as I can on this air tool. He's the one that's lowest. And at this point, I'm going to die. Do hit him with a Chain Lightning and then a follow through impaired basic attack, but it's not enough to actually kill him. And we were kind of just messing around in the voice chat saying, went way too ham. Oops, that was a bit greedy. <laughs> it almost worked out though. I think that play could have been executed in a certain way and we might have walked out with the kill and been fine. So it's a bit sad that it didn't work out. And kind of awkward timing as well for us to all be dead. Now there's all these nukes spawning down the bottom and we're all coming from base. Not ideal, really. But uh, I guess we'll see how it goes. Vala looks like she might be able to grab that top one. Zeratul coming in getting some poke down. Do get some good CC on him, but the Medivh shield does keep him alive. Vala is split pushing a, a fort up top at the moment, so that's worth paying attention to. I think I was aiming for a Zeratul. Actually catch Lunara. We'll take that and Lunara gets exploded. One of the things I'll be doing a lot as a uh, thrall is trying to spell weave. So I'll try to land basic attacks after landing uh, spells. For example, right there, do a big chunk of damage to the Zeratul. That was actually kind of like a, an important little move right there, right? Is that I was almost dead, basically was dead, and I did indeed die, but was able to go in and get an extra basic attack off, and it did chunk Zeratul quite a bit because I knew that he wasn't in position to actually attack me back. It's so just squeezing that little bit of damage out. And although I did die, our teammates win the fight pretty staggeringly, pretty dramatically. So can't complain about that too much. I think that Maw missed, but they pick up the kill regardless. <laughs> but yeah, spell weaving is very important with Thrall. Um, because of your follow through talents at level seven, which is just so good. His basic attacks are very slow, but they hit really hard. So they combo super well with follow through. Uh, we were talking, <laughs> saying the, the enemy team done fucked because they somehow managed from an advantage to not get any of the nukes in that phase. Somehow, I don't know how, but somehow they did. Oh, it's kind of crazy. But yeah, I'll basically want to hit them with a Q, then a basic attack. You can see there, for example, hit Medivh with the W, basic attacked him, then activated my Wind Fury, basic attacked him again. I actually positioned pretty badly right there. With Medivh with the portals, I should have known that he could portal out again, or more likely he should have mounted up. I just escaped. He didn't do that, but he went back through the portals. But I was out of position. I was chasing someone I could never catch. So a bit of a misplay. But yeah, if you stagger your abilities and your basic attacks in order to get the most out of follow through, you're going to do an awful lot of damage. It's where a lot of Thrall's damage comes from. He's not like this sustained, constantly auto-attacking type hero. He's very much about his abilities and those follow-through procs. He can be, he's quite bursty. There you go. Of course, we get body blocked away from the Malfurion, but our teammates do pick up the kill. We landed the CC on him and a bit of poke with our Q, so it's not too bad. And uh, yeah, very important as well. We'll be firing our Q off basically on cooldown that chain lightning every opportunity we get just doing it's very mana efficient just nice bit of poke damage just slowly whittling away at the enemy team mafurian will be able to counter that quite a lot but nonetheless it's gonna be it, it yes. might add up to something significant i don't know <clears throat> gonna take down this siege camp once again very easy camp to take by the way it's a very weak camp Really not much of a problem. You can see I, I leave the last one alive just to be finished off by Chain Lightning Bounce just for an extra healing proc. proc it doesn't really do any damage, so it's fine. Um, might as well fire it off like that. Most efficient way. Well, I don't know if it was the most efficient way, but a, a more efficient way of finishing it off than using another basic attack. At this point, trying to juke around the Mediv vision if possible, just deny him any information. In a little bit of a tricky map situation right now, if you look at it, they've got a Bruiser Camp pushing up top. Now, our teammates are taking our Bruiser Camp. And they've got basically complete control of the bottom and this boss. They can be creating a lot of boss pressure. You can see we're trying to scout that out as soon as we get spotted by the Medivh turning around and running away. But really awkward position right now. Luckily, the enemy team does reveal themselves down bottom. But for this whole sort of period, they could have been creating a lot of boss pressure, I think. It's, it's letting us be far more relaxed uh, in terms of our map movement because they keep showing themselves uh, on the map. It basically takes all the pressure away, which is fantastic. Um... I think if they had just hidden Fog of War, they could have started the boss, they could even just lay the trap, and we would have been pretty much forced to face check, and it could have gone really badly. Now, it does end up going rather badly, uh, <laughs> or he'll just get picked off. Land a Sundering, not like a <clears throat> super ideal Sundering in terms of uh, displacing people, but just hitting four members of the enemy team, just doing quite a bit of damage and allowing us to get a bit of a re-engagement right there. You see, as I'm running away, making sure to proc my abilities as much as possible to get as much healing as possible, firing stuff off on cooldown, getting that trait ticking over. 
going in, hitting the Lunara a couple of times as well. Actually picked him a Diva off with a Q when he w walks too far forward. It's going to throw a nuke down in. Then in the middle, my teammates, Clickshin and uh, Skyforge, were slagging me saying it was a bad nuke. I think that was a really good nuke. That one was really good because it stopped Malfurion from coming in and keeping Lunara alive. It stopped Lunara from running away. It didn't hit anyone, but it was a, it was a zoning nuke. And I, I think it actually was a zoning. That's normally like a... Uh, what's the word? A euphemism for a bad nuke. It's a zoning nuke or a zoning maul. But that, that one was good. I insist it was. And then, as well, as Lunara was dying, I was mostly letting Vala do the work. I did pop in right at the end when I knew it was safe that I was in no danger of dying to get a bit of extra damage out, just so Vala would take a little bit less damage. Which I didn't want to just, like, face tank into the Lunara and then potentially get killed by her. Medivh did pop his vision thing there, saw that, so as soon as he does, I back away from that. They would have had vision on me, could have been caught out. My teammates are doing the boss, so definitely don't want to uh, take any big risks. Unfortunately, Chen just missed my brood on the Chen. That would have helped us secure the boss. So it didn't quite work out. A nice ley line seal comes out as well. We kill off the Chen. Zeratul is in the back, but he is going down. Catch the enemy team in a Sundering. Nice work by the Fala as well. Finish him off with a Chain Lightning too. So triple kill. We lose one. We get the boss. Uh, three for one. Can't complain too much about that. I'm pushing forwards aggressively here. Seeing if we can catch the uh, Lunara. We actually catch the Muradin. Now I think potentially could have staggered my abilities a little bit better. And killed them right there with the follow. And an extra follow through proc. I stacked them up with the Wolf and the Chain Lightning. It's one of those awkward situations where... I wasn't exactly sure if we would kill him on time. I was trying to burst him down before he could heal. In the end, it didn't quite work out, but still, it's a nice pressure. So we won't complain too much. And then we're pushing in with this boss. Look at this Chen. Gets melted. That's my level 13 and 16 talents working in tandem. Well, in tandem with the rest of the team, of course. But uh, Giant Killer, level 13. So our basic attacks do an extra chunk of the enemy's max health. Then Tempest Fury at level 16. We get an extra... We do three attacks with our final Wind Fury Strike. Each one of those applies a full application, applies a full application, words are hard, of Giant Killer. And as you saw, the Chen absolutely melts when those final three hits come in. It really just chunks through his life bar very quickly. Funks, chunks through any hero's life bar pretty quickly, actually. At this point, I thought we were going to retreat, but we're actually uh, doing a call for core. So I was backing off, but I could come in there and re-engage, help my teammates out. Nice shield from the Medivh uh, actually keeps Chen alive as those final three hits from the Wind Fury I was talking about are about to come through. This stage I was very uncertain whether we could get the, the core right here, but it is starting to go down, so I'm sticking with my teammates. Best Sundering in the world. <laughs> Definitely making a mistake right there. Zeratul does come in, but the core is starting to drop, so turning around and focusing on the core. Murden running away for dear life. I get rooted up, not much I can do. Just landing basic attacks as we go. And there you go, we actually do pull off the core. I didn't think we quite had it right there, and it was close, but we do squeeze it out. So well played by the team, and good call for core at the end. Uh, you can see us trying to be defensive, just zone off the Zero to a little bit, uh, and the Lunar a little bit, just have that threat going. But uh, yeah, it worked out really well. And our Vala played great too. Uh, really nice team, I have to say. <laughs> yeah, the Vala got like top everything except top healer, just about. That's okay. And uh, yeah, we'll check out the stats here at the end as well. <clears throat> we'll see how everyone did. But yeah, hopefully that was a pretty good game. Pretty good insight into how to play Thrall, some of his strengths and weaknesses. We didn't do a lot of solo laning in that particular game, which is normally one of Thrall's big things. For example, in Cursed Hollow, just stick him in a solo lane on his own and he's just safe, he does his thing. And uh, yeah, it can be a little bit boring playing Thrall sometimes, to be honest. But uh, I do like him. I do find him fun. Not quite at the Master Skin yet, but we'll get there, we'll get there. There's the stats. We did plenty of damage. Can't complain too much about that. There's the talent build, by the way. Level 20 would have picked up Bolt of the Storm. Hope you guys enjoyed that one. Do check back for more gameplay stuff. I will, as I said as well, have a uh, viewer replay coaching our analysis segment up on the channel soon for Thrall Game 2. So even more info for Thrall if you want to go more in depth. And uh, yeah, I will see you all next time. Give it a like, by the way, Ooh, as well. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up. I'll see you all next time for more Heroes of the Storm. Bye-bye.